Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on Ohm's Law. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, a little bit of review first. So we've introduced this idea of a schematic, and here we have a schematic drawing of a battery, a light bulb, and then the connecting wires. Well, a simple circuit is usually made with a resistor. A resistor is just a device that um, basically resists the flow of electricity through this circuit. It basically prevents this battery from just short circuiting and sending all of its electricity at once. So the bigger the resistor, the harder it is for electricity to flow, and so it slows stuff down. Now we've talked a little bit about this idea of voltage. Voltage is the amount of energy per charge. So basically think of it as as charge moves through a circuit, how much energy does each charge have? Current, measured in amps, is the amount of charge per second, or it's basically how fast charge is flowing through the circuit. And resistance, like I just said, is how hard it is for electricity to flow. Now, this equation is new, um, but maybe you've kind of realized it based on our definition before. Uh, but current can be measured in charge per time, meaning you take the amount of charge that passed through um, a spot or place, and you divide it by the amount of time it took. All right, so we've kind of laid the foundation a little bit, but let's recap one more time because we're going to use all of these terms over and over and over again. I want to make sure that you have a good understanding before we talk about Ohm's law. So voltage supplied by the battery in this case is how much energy each charge gets as it moves through this circuit. Current is how fast that charge is flowing through this circuit or the amount of charge per second. And resistance is how hard it is for electricity to flow, meaning if it's really easy, then the current tends to be really big and it flows really fast. Um, but if this is a much bigger resistor, like let's say 1,000 ohms or 20,000 ohms, then that slows down or makes it much harder for a current to flow, and so less will flow. Which kind of leads us to Ohm's Law. And so let's talk about Ohm's Law in terms of an analogy first. Um, here we have an analogy in the form of a cartoon. So voltage is often thought of as how much pressure there is or how much push there is uh, on the current uh, as it's being pushed through the circuit, kind of imagined as a pipe here. And ohms are basically, or resistance is basically how hard it is for that stuff to go through. So if this guy, or the um, example of a resistor here, wasn't pulling quite so tight, in other words, he was a little bit smaller resistance, then the voltage could push current through really easily. But with bigger resistance, this kind of squeezes that pipe down or squeezes the um, wires a little bit in a sense, uh, making it much harder for electricity to go through. Another analogy uh, is we've got this idea of a monkey um, kind of blowing air through a straw in this case. So voltage would be kind of the pressure um, provided by the monkey from his cheeks. Current would be the amount of air passing through the straw. And resistance would be another monkey coming in and squeezing that straw. So if he squeezes it really tight, then not much air goes through. Um, so there's a lot of resistance to it. If he kind of lets go completely, air goes through as fast as it can. And so here we have the idea of voltage again being that pressure, um, current being how fast the air is flowing through, and resistance being kind of how much of a pinch there is or how much resistance there is to the flow of air. All right, that leads us to Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is the following. Voltage equals current times resistance. It's pretty simple, but that's the relationship between it, meaning as you increase the resistance here, um, there's an inverse relationship with current uh, given that voltage is constant. I'll go back to that for a second. Um, so just a heads up, V is for voltage, I is for current, R is for resistance, and we've talked about this before, uh, but the uh, voltage is measured in volts, pretty handy right there. Uh, current is measured in amps, and resistance is measured in ohms, given by this little horseshoe symbol, also known as an omega symbol. So essentially, Ohm's law lets us predict how much current will flow through a circuit given a certain amount of voltage. So for example, if we have a 10 volt battery connected up to a 20 ohm resistor, we know these two things as our given information. So we plug in 10 volts and 20 uh, ohms in this case, and we can solve and figure out that 0.5 amps of current will flow through, meaning 0.5 uh, coulombs of charge will flow through any point at, uh, or within one second. 
But one last question. What if we want to know how much power a circuit is using? Because before we talked about voltage, which is kind of like energy, and we talked about current, which is kind of like how fast stuff is flowing, and resistance is kind of like how easy it is for stuff to flow. But we haven't talked about power, and most of the time when we talk about electricity, we talk about power. Well, power before we looked at um, in previous units was energy per time, or in other words, the amount of energy divided by the amount of time it took to change that amount of energy. Well, in this case, um, power is actually just going to be current times voltage is what it comes out to. Now, you can trust me that this comes out to the same thing as the change in energy per time, or if you want to, I'll go through that real quickly. Otherwise, if that's enough for you, you can kind of uh, finish up taking your summary while I quickly explain how this works. So if we know that current is charge divided by time, and we know that voltage is energy per charge, then power as current times voltage is simply charge over time times energy per charge. Well, if you've taken chemistry, you know that some units can cancel here. So we can cancel out the charge because it's on top and bottom, which just leaves us with energy per time. So really what that means is current times voltage is the equivalent of energy divided by time. Because we're looking at how much charge comes through and then how much energy each charge has. So combined, we can figure out energy per time. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.